Hello, Earth speaking. Hello, Dad. Yes, Bethy. Are you okay? Yeah. What you just listened to was an actual recording between eight-year-old Elizabeth Stauffer and her father, Irv, recorded by the FBI. This call was made after she and her mother had been abducted by a man called Ming Sen Shui. It's a story of unreasonable infatuation, daylight kidnapping, daring escapes, a hired hitman, and an attempted homicide in a court of law. This is the kidnapping of Mary Stauffer and her eight-year-old daughter, Elizabeth. Meet the Stauffers a family of four as of 1980. They lived in the Bethel University campus of Minnesota, where they worked as missionaries. Trouble started two days before the family was supposed to move to the Philippines. Mary, the mother, took eight-year-old Elizabeth to a hair salon to get her fixed before the move, but they never came back. Mary's husband, Irv, and their son, Steve, started getting worried when they heard no word from them. Steve and I were at home alone, wondering what's happening. Where are Mary and Beth? Why haven't they come home yet? Mom's not the kind to run away. Mom loves me. Mom loves Dad. Mom loves my sister. There hasn't been any arguments. One would assume that perhaps Mary ran away with Elizabeth. Perhaps she was trying to escape an abusive home or a violent husband, as was common in the 1900s. But this wasn't the case. These ladies came from a loving and stable family with no problems of domestic violence whatsoever. So where did they go? Why weren't they home? At this time, there was already talk of a kidnapping. A kid named Jason Wilkman had just been abducted that day by an unidentified man. Scared for his wife's and daughter's safety, Irv called the police and a search began. Eventually, Mary's car was found in a ditch and thankfully, there were no bodies. But from what they found, it appeared that Mary and her daughter had been kidnapped. According to Mary, when she narrated her ordeal, she and Elizabeth had just finished at the hair salon and were on their way to the car when a man walked up to them. She had assumed he was looking for directions, but he had a gun and pointed it at them. A scared Mary and Elizabeth complied as the man tied them up and forced them into the trunk of his car and started to drive. He opened the trunk and I realized he was going to put us in the trunk. That was very, very scary for me. I said, please don't put us in the trunk. We won't be able to breathe. We were lying face down and then the trunk was closed. Mary says she remembers being terrified. She had no idea if she and her daughter were going to be alive the next minute. She says they made a lot of noise, especially when they heard a cop car at an intersection. The man stopped the vehicle and announced, if this police car turns and follows, I'm going to kill you and your daughter. You can imagine how scary it must have been to hope that the police, the people who are supposed to save you from moments like this, don't come to your rescue. Thankfully, the cops didn't follow. Tied up at the back of the trunk, Mary and Elizabeth tried to get free by trying to untie their binds, much to the chagrin of their kidnapper. He stopped for a second time and opened the trunk. Finding Elizabeth untied, he was not pleased with what he saw, and this resulted in some form of struggle which attracted an onlooker. Six-year-old Jason Wilkman was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He came and peered into the trunk. Seeing that he had a witness, the man also kidnaps Jason and puts him in the trunk, and continues to drive. Little boys walk up toward the car, and one stays at the front of the car, one walks to the back trunk where he has it open, and he looks in and he sees this woman and child duct taped together, and, and his alarm says, whoa. All of a sudden, something was uh, placed at, on my feet. And then I could hear whimpering, and I thought, this is a child. Mary and Elizabeth tried to calm Jason, because as you can imagine, this is traumatic for a six-year-old. The car makes another stop and the man takes out Jason. After a few moments, he returns. Mary asks him what he did with the kid, and he said, I placed him where they can find him. The mother and daughter eventually get moved to a van and then transported to the man's house. They were placed in a closet turned prison, having only a blanket and two pillows. It's a light bulb with a pull chain. There was a scatter rug on the floor and two small throw pillows. And that closet became our home for the next seven and a half weeks. It was there that they found out who this man was. His name was Sing Men Shui, a 30-year-old man of Taiwanese descent. Shui moved to Minnesota at age eight with his parents and two siblings. Shui's father died three years after that, so he grew up with his mom and younger ones. Sadly, Shui was described as a belligerent child, being abusive to his younger siblings from adolescence to adulthood. 
Even as a teenager, he was always engaged in criminal activities, going as far as throwing rocks at vehicles and even setting fires in the apartments of strangers. For his juvenile crimes, he was sentenced to court-mandated therapy. His mother even described him as a troublesome and uncontrollable child who always wanted to be right and had no proclivity for remorse of any of his actions. And before you dismiss this as some form of over-exaggeration, wait till the end of the video. It also came to light that Shui was actually one of Mary's students when she taught as a math teacher in Alexander Ramsey High School in Roseville, 15 years prior. Shui confessed to having a crush on Mary as a teenager. He had sexual fantasies about his algebra teacher, writing stories that featured Mary in abusive, coital situations. It seems that over time, those fantasies were no longer enough. In his house, Shui had a video camera and he recorded their conversations, as well as all the times he forcefully had his way with her. He revealed that he had been spying on Mary and her family for a very long time. He knew her husband and her son. He knew what they were up to. He even knew where they placed the spare keys to their house. Shui blamed Mary for the fact that he became a prisoner of war and was sent to the Vietnam War. He says that he would have gone to college if Mary had not given him a bad grade and broke his perfect score. Mary assumed the bad grade must have been an F. Turns out, it was a B-. These were all lies, by the way. It was all an attempt to get Mary to feel sorry for him, because upon hearing that the Stauffers were moving to the Philippines, he could not bear the thought of letting Mary go, so he kidnapped her. This wasn't even the first time he'd tried something like this. Five years prior, he'd broken into the house of Mary's in-laws, in shirts of Mary. He'd held them down at gunpoint, and upon realizing that Mary wasn't there, he let them go and threatened them to silence, so the break-in was never reported. Shui was obsessed with Mary. He wanted to be with her, and with Elizabeth around, he'd hoped they'd be a family. Shui knew it was wrong, but the idea was that if he kept them around for long enough, they'd grow to love him. For seven weeks, he held them hostage. On one occasion, he took Mary out in public. It was some kind of date where he held her at gunpoint, threatening to shoot her if she alerted anyone of her kidnapping. Where was Elizabeth? He had her chained in his home. Sometimes he chained her in his car whenever they went to work. In the time they spent with their abductor, he constantly threatened them with death if they ever tried to escape, so they never did. So, as a way of rewarding Elizabeth for good behavior, he let her call Irv on Father's Day. Hello, Irv speaking. Hello, Dad. Yes, Bethy. Are you okay? Yeah. Is mommy okay? Yes. That's good. Oh, I'm. Mommy, happy, yes. Happy Father's Day. Oh, thank you so much, sweetie. You're fine, Dad. Oh, I'm so glad. We can't talk anymore. Um, when can you come home? I don't know. Can I talk? Can you okay, Dad? Can I talk to him? No. Okay, you call again. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye, sweetie. Shui even took them out to see the fireworks on the 4th of July. It was then that Mary memorized the cell phone number of the police from a police car. She also got Elizabeth to memorize the number. Mary says there were times where she questioned her faith, times when she thought God had abandoned them. But Elizabeth seemed optimistic, so she tried not to bring down her daughter's spirit. Little did they know that a window of opportunity was about to open. On July 7th, 1980, Shui left Mary and Elizabeth chained together and locked in their prison closet. At that moment, Mary decided to attempt an escape. Elizabeth advised against it, but Mary told her, I can't do this without you. Mary removed the hinge pin from the closet door, which came out easily as if it was greased, and made their way to the kitchen phone. She'd called the number she memorized, informed them of their whereabouts, and received strict instructions from the police to stay inside. Mary and her daughter did the contrary, and made their way outside and hid behind a car. The police came and began searching their house and couldn't find them. Thankfully, a police officer saw some movement by a car and found both Mary and Elizabeth. They reunited with their family moments later, overjoyed and glad to be free. Ming Sen Shui was arrested on the same day in his workplace and placed in jail. You'd think that'd be enough to stop him, but no. He actually tried to hire a hitman to kill them, an inmate by the name of Richard Green in his jail cell promising him a sum of $50,000. Thankfully, Richard refused and went straight to the FBI. Shui underwent two trials, one for the abduction of Mary and Elizabeth and the assault of Mary. He was sentenced to life in prison, serving a mandatory 30 years and a possibility of parole. He got this sentence by divulging the location of Jason Wilkman. Jason's dead body was later found. He'd been beaten with a metal rod. In 1981 came Ming's second trial, 
one held for what he did to Jason, and when Mary Stauffer came to testify, he jumped over the table with a knife and held her violently. He proceeded to leave a nasty cut on her jaw that took a total of 62 stitches to close. At the same time, Shui promised that he would end the lives of Mary and her daughter if he's ever released from prison and if they're no longer alive, he'll set her for the next of kin. Ming became eligible for parole on July 6, 2010, but was denied parole and is serving a life sentence at FMC Rochester. In one of his hearings, Ming Seng Shui broke down in tears, asking for Mary and Beth's forgiveness. Mary and Elizabeth recovered from the trauma and have gone on to lead very productive lives and happy lives, expanding their family to the point where Mary is now a great-grandmother. The best part is, they're happy to tell their story to help victims like themselves. In 2019, a movie based on their story was produced, Abducted, the Mary Stauffer story, played by How I Met Your Mother star, Alison Hannigan. In the end, the Stauffers chose not to let their past define them, and settled for having a good life as a way of making up for the trauma of their past. Be sure to leave a comment and like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more of our great content. Thanks for watching.